The Kunin Cross Oath Kunin Karishu Satam, taken on 3 January 1653, was a public avowal by members of the St. Thomas Christian Community of Kerala, India that they would not submit to Portuguese dominance in ecclesiastical and secular life. The swearing of the oath at Matancheri was a major event in the history of the St. Thomas Christian Community and marked a major turning point in its relations with the Portuguese occupation forces. The oath resulted in the breaking up of 54 years of Portuguese Pedrodo patronage jurisdiction over the Malankara Orthodox Syrian Church, started with the Synod of Diamper in 1599 AD convoked by the Portuguese Archbishop Dom Alexio de Menezes. <laughs> <laughs> Background The St. Thomas Christians remain in communion with the Church of the East. It is believed that Malabar Church was in communion with the Church of the East from CE 300 to CE 1599. With the establishment of Portuguese power in parts of India, clergy of that empire, in particular members of the Society of Jesus Jesuits, attempted to Latinize the Indian Christians. The Portuguese started a Latin Rite diocese in Goa 1534 and another at Cochin 1558, and sought to bring the St. Thomas Christians under the jurisdiction of the Portuguese Pedrodo and into the Latin Rite of the Catholic Church. A series of synods, including the 1585 Synod of Goa, were held, which introduced Latinized elements to the local liturgy. In 1599 Alexo de Menezes, Archbishop of Goa, led the Synod of Diamper, which finally brought the St. Thomas Christians fully under the authority of the Latin Archdiocese of Goa. The independence of the ancient Church of Malankara was rescinded. The Pedrodo patronage of the Portuguese crown was only momentary for the feelings of resentment and the desire to regain independence among the St. Thomas Christians were very real and could not be contained for long. In 1653, Ahadala of Antioch visited Malankara and was captured by the Portuguese. He was taken on board a Portuguese ship at Madras bound for Goa and en route, it touched Cochin. Local Christians heard of the arrival of the ship at Cochin. The archdeacon with a large number of priests and several thousands of St. Thomas Christians assembled at Matancheri Cochin. Their efforts to visit the bishop when the fleet arrived in Cochin multiplied but were not fruitful. Several letters were sent to all the civil and religious authorities in Cochin, for at least an opportunity to visit Mar Ahadala, to examine his credentials and to verify his identity, promising that if he was found an impostor, they would be the first to press for his punishment. Due to the staunch and intransigent opposition of the Archbishop Garcia and the Jesuit fathers it did not happen. The Archbishop even refused to meet the Christians, who wanted to discuss the matter with him. What happened to Mara Hadala in the midst of Arabian Sea is still a mystery. Further resentment of these measures led a part of the community to take the Kunin Cross Oath in 1653 swearing, never to submit to the Portuguese. Ahadala claimed to be the Patriarch of Antioch and hence was often called himself, Ignatius Aloho, which was the name of the Patriarch Ignatius Hadayat Aloho. According to some writing on 1980s, Metropolitan Mar Ahatala is said to have landed at Surat in 1652 and thence came to Mylapore, where he was arrested by the Jesuits on 3 August 1652. While at Mylapore, Mar Ahatala met two Syrian Christian deacons, viz. Chenganur Ltty and Kuravalangad Kizhikadath Kurian from Malankara, who were on a pilgrimage to the tomb of St. Thomas and sent a letter through them to the Church of Malankara saying, Behold, I Ignatius, Patriarch of all India and China, send to you a letter through the clerics who came here from your place. When you have read this letter diligently send me two priests and forty men. If however, you wish to send them from your place, send them cautiously, quickly and soon, so that seeing your people they would release me without hindrance. I came to the city of Mylapore thinking that many people come here, and that priests would get me to your place of the Indias. In the year 1652 of our Lord, in the month of August, on Monday, I arrived in Mylapore in the monastery of the Jesuits. In the same monastery I stay, and they help me very much, may their reward increase here and there. Peace be with them, with you, and with us now and always. Amen. I, Ignatius, Patriarch of all India and China. When the ship carrying Mara Hadala reached Goa, he was handed over to the Inquisition, and he was kept in close custody in the Jesuit house there. He was sent to Portugal on the ship Nossa Senhora da Graca from Goa and reached Lisbon on the 14th of July 1653. The King of Portugal decided to send him to Rome. 
Accordingly, while he was on his way to Rome, he died at Paris on 26 March 1654 and is buried at the Jerusalem Chapel of the Cordeliana Church. Saint Vincent de Paul who met Mara Hadala at Paris mentions of him in the following words. There remains in this city a good old man of eighty years, a foreigner, who was lodging with the late Monsignor Archbishop of Myra. They say he is the Patriarch of Antioch. Be that it may, he is alone and has no mark of prelacy." The treatment of Mar Ahatala, however, shocked the Christian community, and their wounded feelings effervesced into a mass upsurge which heralded the breaking off from the Pedrodo of the Portuguese crown and the Paulists. Oath Seeing that the archbishop thus turned a deaf ear to their insistent pleas, the Nasranis became extremely exasperated. A rumor also was spread at this time that Mara Hadala was drowned by the Portuguese. Hence on 3 January 1653, Archdeacon Thomas and representatives from the community assembled at St. Mary's Church de Vida at Matancheri to swear what would be known as the Kunin Cross Oath. The following oath was read aloud with lighted candles, with the archdeacon and the leading priests touching the Bible while the people held ropes tied to a cross outside the church. The number of people who took part in the Satyam oath was so significant that all of them could not touch the granite cross at the same time. Therefore, they held onto ropes tied to the cross in all directions. According to tradition, after the historic oath was read, out of a population of 200,000 St. Thomas Christians, only 400 remained loyal to the Archbishop Garcia. They met at Edapoli St. George Church on 5 February 1653, on the last day of the Munu Noyambu fast Feast of Jonah, the most solemn day of the feast, and declared that through a letter, Patriarch Ahatala has conferred upon Archdeacon Thomas the governorship of the Malankara Syrian Church and all the powers of jurisdiction over the church. Four councillors were assigned to the governor. They were Chandi Palavidal of Kuruvalangad, George Vengor of Akaparambu, Chandi Kadaval of Kadutharuthi and Idithaman Angelimudal of Kalachari, belonging to the southeast community. Then, according to the second letter of Mara Hadala, which later the Catholic faction accuses as fabricated by Idithaman Angelimudal Kathanar on the 22nd of May 1653, at St. Mary. S. Church Alangad, during the solemn celebration of the Feast of the Ascension, the people and priests assembled their elected Archdeacon Thomas, as their bishop and gave him the title Mar Toma I. He was consecrated using an Oriental consecration rite, but by the laying hands on him by twelve priests, instead of any bishops doing it, which was mandatory according to the canon laws of all the churches all over the world. Until then there was no such a tradition of consecration by priests instead of bishops in Malankara. Hence the Malankara Syrian Church adopted quite a new way of ordaining a bishop by laying hands of twelve priests as there was no bishop in India at that time who would do it for him. All the bishops who were in India at that time were of the Roman Catholic Church and they would not do the consecration of him as it was against their bishop the said oath was made. There were no Oriental or Eastern Church bishops India at that time, because the Portuguese had imposed a sort of embargo on the Malankara Syrian Church, so that no such bishops would reach India. The Pope's Apostolic Commissary and Carmelite Fr. Friar Joseph of St. Mary Sebastiani arrived in Malankara in 1657 and started challenging the legitimacy of the ordination of Mar Toma I. This led to the split of Malankara Syrian Church in two factions, one supporting Mar Toma I and the other supporting Friar Sebastiani. This led the Mar Toma I faction of the Malankara Syrian Church to ask for a metropolitan bishop from the Church of Antioch to regularize the validity of the consecration of Mar Toma I. In addition to its religious significance, the event broke the 54-year-old Pedrodo patronage rule of the Portuguese crown over the Malankara Syrian Church, Pedrodo supremacy of Portuguese crown imposed at the Adiamper Synod in 1599. Aftermath The Malankara Syrian Catholic faction was headed by the Carmelite Fr. Friar Sebastiani until 1663, when Dutch came and captured Cochin and they forced all the Europeans other than the Dutch to leave the place. Thus when he was forced to leave India he consecrated Chandi Palavidal a cousin of Mar Toma I as bishop of the Syrian Catholic faction. 
After the Cunan Cross Oath the Portuguese missionaries attempted reconciliation with the St. Thomas Christians but they were not successful. It was as a result of this, that Pope Alexander VII sent the Italian Fr. Friar Joseph of St. Maria Sebastiani at the head of a Carmelite delegation who succeeded in winning over a large section of St. Thomas Christians, including three of the four councillors of Mar Toma I, Palavidal Chandi Kathaner, Vangor Givergaz Kathaner and Kadaval Chandi Kathaner to his side. This led to the first permanent split in the Malankara Syrian Church. Thereafter, the faction affiliated with the Catholic Church under Palavidal Mar Chandi was designated as the Puthankutukar, or New Party, while the branch continued affiliated with Mar Toma I was called as the Pazayakatukar, or Old Party. These appellations have been somewhat controversial, as both groups considered themselves the true heirs to the St. Thomas tradition, and saw the other as heretical. In 1665, Mar Gregorios Abdul Jalil, a bishop sent by the Syriac Orthodox West Syrian Patriarch of Antioch after the Metropolitan Mar Ahitala arrived in India at the invitation of Mar Toma I. This visit resulted in establishing full ecclesiastical communion with the Syriac Orthodox Church of Antioch. Between 1657 to 63, 84 of the 116 Malankara Syrian churches shifted their allegiance to the Malankara Syrian Catholic faction of the East Syriac Rite. This church from 1923 is known officially as the Syro Malabar Catholic Church. It is in full communion with the Roman Catholic Church. They received their own Syro Malabar hierarchy on the 21st of December 1923, with the Metropolitan March Augustine Candadal as the head of their church. The St. Thomas Christians by this process became divided into East Syrians and West Syrians. The split into Malankara Syriac Orthodox and Syro-Malabar factions would become permanent. Over the next centuries, the Malankara faction would experience further splits and schisms, and a small portion of the Syrian Catholic Church reaffirmed their ties with the Assyrian Church of the East in 1882, forming the Chaldean Syrian Church of Trisur. Various interpretations of the events Topic. Stephen Neal's version The situation is explained by Stephen Neal an Anglican Protestant missionary, from Scotland in his book A History of Christianity in India, the beginnings to AD 1707. On sick January 1653, priests and people assembled in the church of Our Lady at Matincherry, and standing in front of a cross and lighted candles swore upon the Holy Gospel that they would no longer obey Garcia, and that they would have nothing further to do with the Jesuits they would recognize the archdeacon as the governor of their church. This is the famous oath of the Kunin Cross, the open-air cross which stands outside the church at Matincherry. The St. Thomas Christians did not at any point suggest that they wished to separate themselves from the Pope. They could no longer tolerate the arrogance of Garcia. And their detestation of the Jesuits, to whose overbearing attitude and lack of sympathy they attributed all their troubles, breathes through all the documents of the time. But let the Pope send them a true bishop not a Jesuit, and they will be pleased to receive and obey him. Malankara Jacobite Syriac Orthodox Church and Malankara Orthodox Church, in response to the continuous appeal of the Toma Arkadiakon Archdeacon, who was then given the church leadership, Mar Ahadala arrived in 1653. A rumor spread that the Portuguese arrested him, tied him up and cast him into the ocean. As a result, a large gathering of about 25,000 assembled at Matincherry and took the oath at Kunin Cross, the historical Kunin Karisu Sathiyam in 1653, declaring their future generations would never adhere to the Franks i.e. Portuguese nor accept the faith of the Pope. Malankara Marthama Syrian Church, by the Father, Son and Holy Ghost that henceforth we would not adhere to the Franks, nor accept the faith of the Pope of Rome, nor any foreign rule. Jacobite Syrian Church Church also adheres to the same version of Marthama Syrian Church, Syro-Malabar Catholic Church and Syro-Malankara Catholic Church version. A protest took place in 1653 with the Kunin Cross Oath. Under the leadership of Angelimudal Idithaman Kathaner of Kalisari, the St. Thomas Christians publicly took an oath that they would not obey the Jesuit Archbishop Garcia or any other prelate from the Paulists, Jesuit priests from St. Paul Seminary Goa. The oath was not against the Pope or the Catholic Church but against the Paulists. Topic. See also 
Topic: Throne of Saint Thomas, Malankara Church, Malankara Jacobite Syriac Orthodox Church, Goa Inquisition, Syrian Malabar Nasrani, Synod of Diyanpur. Topic: Notes. Topic. Topic. References. Topic. Baum, Wilhelm, Winkler, Dietmar W. 2003. The Church of the East: A Concise History. London, New York: Routledge Curzon. Daniel, David. 2010. Kunin Cross Oath, Orthodox Herald. Com. The 5th of January 2010. Accessed the 31st of December 2015. Freikenberg, Eric. 2008. Christianity in India: From the Beginnings to the Present. Oxford, ISBN 0-19-826377-5. Neil, Stephen. 2004. A History of Christianity in India: The Beginnings to AD 1707. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-54885-3. Retrieved 20 April 2010. External links Jacobite Syrian Church Niranam Diocese of Jacobite Syrian Church History of the Orthodox Church History of the Syro-Malabar Church